There she is, everybody, the USS Pompanito. There's her anchor chain. As I kind of pan across the bow here, you can see there's some vents in between the internal pressure hull and the external hull. And there you can see just the top, we got the uh, two of the six bow torpedo tubes here and the torpedo tube doors are closed. And there's her dive planes. Now during submerged operation, those dive planes would be folded downward, horizontal with the boat, and she'd use them to guide her path while submerged. Here we can see her forward mounted, I uh, believe that's a four inch wet mount deck gun and as we move back toward the conning tower that there's her 20 millimeter one of her 20 millimeter anti-aircraft weapons and moving up the conning tower we got the masts for the surface search and air search radars radar masts your SD and your SJ basically and then, of course, clean sweep, baby. And uh, on the far right there, you'll see uh, the periscope mast. Masts, both of those. There were, of course, navigation, observation, and attack periscopes. And there's the aft mounted. 40 millimeter Bofors anti-aircraft gun. Looks like that's uh, where they're pumping out the bilge. Down at the water line, it definitely looks like she's ready for a dry dock. And keep moving aft. And you really can't make out the stern planes from here. They must be underwater. And continuing aft. Looks like we can just make out what I believe is the exterior of tube number seven. And it looks like it's welded shut. And you can see more evidence of uh, time for her periodic dry docking. And there's your Mark 14 steam-driven torpedo. Kind of hard to convey a sense of how big these torpedoes are. I'm a big dude. I'm six foot four, 260 pounds. This thing looks to be about 12 feet long. They had to manhandle these into the sub using nothing but chains and pulleys. Wow. Man, I would not want to be the guy in charge of handling one of these. I know most of my friends watching this are probably already familiar with the, with the basics on how a submarine operates. I don't know. kind of thought it was nice they gave us this little graphic here to demonstrate the shift in a submarine center of buoyancy 
between being surfaced and submerged. You know, it's funny. Over the years, I've crawled over every inch of this old boat, and I still get a tingle every time I step on board like it's the first time. Oh, that's the Liberty ship Jeremiah O'Brien off in the distance there. We're moving aft. We're about to tour the boat. And there's the entrance. Ah, uh, but before we head below, let's get another look at the conning tower as viewed from the stern. There's that 40 millimeter anti-aircraft. Man, I wouldn't want to be on the business end of that thing. And the bridge. There's Pompanito's Bell. Okay, we just came through the entrance and we're down in the Pompanito. And we're in the aft torpedo room. And we've got tubes. Torpedo tube 7, 8, 9, and 10. The uh, meatball flags painted on the tubes, that's interesting. Look at that brass. Uh, we're separated here by plexiglass. Uh, in years past, I recall there being a bit more freedom to move about the boat. But I suppose times being what they are, eh, they've had to take measures. And as we adjust the view forward, I am right next to and surrounded by Mark 14 torpedoes. And as you can see, if you were stationed back here, you can imagine this is a cruise bunk. Things would be a lot more comfortable as the torpedoes were expended throughout the patrol. All right, let's move forward. Looks like a sink that folds down there. And the aft head. <laughs> you would uh, pull on that lever there to... Uh... All right, let's move along. Okay, we just moved forward into the maneuvering room. The aft torpedo room's behind us. What strikes me right off the bat, every, every time I come down into this boat, is the smell. It's kind of a mix of, it's a mix of seawater, diesel fuel. It's something of a, of a moldy smell, but it's, it's strange. It's, it's kind of a good smell, an earthy, comforting smell. That may sound kind of silly. Surely I would feel different if I were smelling that smell 400 feet below the surface when it's 104 degrees with condensation dripping off every surface 
and I'm undergoing a depth charge after having not showered for a month or two. Oh, squawk box. And uh, this would appear to be the station where charging of the boat's electric batteries was done. Uh, at any time, power from the boat's diesel engines could be shunted into charging the boat's batteries. Uh, the electric batteries is what it would use when it was submerged. And it would, of course, run the diesels to both propel the boat and charge the batteries while on the surface. Alright, let's move forward through the maneuvering room. Yep, that cramped little space is an office and a desk. As I mentioned, I'm kind of a kind of a big stocky guy. Okay, I'm fat. Anyway, I barely fit through these passages. Oh boy, even if I had made it through submarine school, I probably still would have been rejected for the silent service. I'm just too big and clumsy. I don't know though, I'm a pretty good cook. All right, notice every available space that isn't packed with essential equipment is storage or a workspace. All right. Man, I just love all these brass fixtures. Let's continue moving forward. Okay, we just came out of the maneuvering room behind us, and we are now in the aft engine room. And to either side of us, you can see, are these massive diesel engines. I believe these, oh, let's see. Boy, I don't know, are these the air intakes? I'm not sure. I wish I were a more technically savvy guy and I could give you a better narrative of what I'm looking at around me, but these are obviously the enormous diesel engines used to push these boats at over 20 knots when they're surfaced and charge the electric batteries. We're still in the aft engine room and we're looking back aft now. I wonder how often men would stare up at that closed hatch and think about the sunshine and fresh air. How's that for a timing chain? carbon monoxide filters to help scrub the air when the boat was submerged to try and keep it breathable for as long as possible. 
And here we have what's something, something similar to what's called the Christmas tree up in the control room. It's an indicator that shows hull openings and whether or not they're secure. You wanted a green board. All right. That's the aft engine room. Let's move forward. Okay. Now we are in the forward engine room. And I'll tell you, this compartment is absolutely cavernous compared to the compartments behind me. And again, to either side, more massive diesel engines. Another Christmas tree display there. Now I don't have access to the spaces below. Uh, maybe I can help you get a look at what's down there. Engine works, build spaces, more workspaces. All right, that's the forward engine room. Let's continue moving forward. All right, with the forward engine room now behind us, we've moved into the cruise quarters. There's a spot to do laundry. Sinks. Cruise bunks. Okay, let's move forward to the cruise quarters. And now we're moving into the cruise mess. The galley. This is the where the crew of the submarine would eat their meals, commiserate. Now we got a backgammon board built into the table there. Checkerboard. Ah, this was probably the most popular table on the boat.
All right. That's the crew's mess. Oh, wait. Here's the most important part of the boat. There's the galley. That is such a tiny space. Can you imagine cooking meals for 20, 30 men at a time? Figure what, three, four shifts a day? Moving forward from the galley, here we have the boat's radio room. And we're looking forward into the control room now. Looks like here maybe we've got uh, trim controls. Here in the control room is the Christmas tree. The main Christmas tree. This uh, showed all access to outer hatches that could let water into the boat. And you wanted a green board before submerging. Up this ladder is the access hatch to the conning tower, which gave you access to the bridge, the attack periscope. Used to be able to go up there, but I guess somebody fell and hurt themselves, so now nobody can go up there. We'll try a little trick and see if. Maybe I can get you a little bit of footage of inside the conning tower. Here's more workspaces in the control room. And looking forward, I believe this is the dive station, although I can't be sure. Compass. And moving forward from the control room. Here's the ship's office. We're in officer's country now. This is the berthing area 
for the officers aboard the sub. This is the stateroom for the petty officers of the boat. This is the skipper's quarters. And he got to have his own bunk. And here's the officer's ward room. This is where the officers aboard the boat would eat their meals and commiserate. There'd probably be a cribbage game going on on that table at any point in time. It looks like a pantry for the officers. We're about to head into the forward torpedo room here. Okay, and moving out of officers country, we're now in the forward torpedo room. Again, to the right and left, we've got torpedo stowage and these big long racks that were used to move the torpedoes into the tubes. Here's a cut open torpedo to show the steam turbine engines. torpedo tubes one through six. And more bunks for the crew. Okay, we're coming up the stairway to exit the boat. Thought it might be interesting to show this. As we exit, we can actually see the space. We can see the outside of the pressure hull here the space in between the pressure hull and the outer hull. And we can just see the four inch gun looking almost right at us. And we've just come up out of the sub. And there's the view forward. Alcatraz Island off in the distance. And here's the four inch deck gun. This is 
it's not a four inch deck gun. I'm sure one of you will be sure to correct me. <laughs> There's the breech. And our 20 millimeter anti-aircraft. Continue moving aft. Again, there's one of the radar masts. And there's our 40 millimeter gun mount. Boy, this has been fun. I sure love coming aboard this boat. Thanks for hanging out with me. We got some funny looks from tourists. But hey, all in a day's work. <laughs>